check out our website at skimmeroutdoors.com. These tips were brought to you by augiestackle.com. Welcome to skimmeroutdoors.com. I'm Captain Al Lorenzetti, and I want to talk to you about flounder fishing. Flounder are very exciting to fish for, and they are certainly one of the best you can have on the table. So I just want to run through the basics of a flounder outing, a day on the bay, catching these magnificent fish. First of all, you have to be in a spot where there are flounder. And even though I hate to say it, you might have to look for a little fleet of boats and see where they're fishing. But preferably, you know, a nice spot where there's a good bottom, a little bit of muddy bottom. Uh, anywhere from 6 to 10 feet of water would be good. Uh, so you locate a spot and you want to set yourself up, you want to anchor, and you want to keep the boat stationary. And that's very important. So sometimes you might have to use two anchors if you have a windy day or a current against the wind. The boat's going to shift back and forth and that's not really good. Flounder like to have the bait that you're going to use sitting pretty much stationary and they're going to be attracted to the chump. So you want to stay stationary. So I would recommend double anchoring all right, under most conditions. Uh, certain times a single anchor will work pretty well if the current and the wind are in the same direction. But if anything other than that, you probably want to use two anchors, hold the boat stationary. So you get yourself set up on a spot that you think is going to be productive, you anchor up. Next thing to do is get your chum in the water. You have to chum, especially in the springtime. Fish are a little bit lethargic, the water's cold. So you want to get a good amount of chum on the bottom, drifting out in the current to attract the fish and bring them to you. Well, after you're all set and anchored, you're in your good spot, the next thing is you have to get the chum going. So you're going to need a chum pot. Uh, and you have a couple of choices there. This is a one quart chum pot with large mesh. This is a half gallon size with the fine mesh. The uh, mesh size, I think, plays an important role in considering it in terms of the time of the year. In the early spring when the water's cold, the frozen chum isn't going to melt that quickly. So you want to have big openings to allow what little does melt to flow out of the pot quickly. So in cold water, I prefer a larger mesh. On the other hand, when things warm up towards the end of the season, uh, the water is warm. The chum is going to melt quickly and you don't want it to just blow out of this pot in no time at all. So then I go with the finer mesh. It'll hold it in, let a little bit of the juice out in small particles and it'll just, uh, it's more appropriate in a warm water situation. Uh, also, don't forget, once you take your chum, which by the way is sold frozen, ground up clam usually is best, in a uh, plastic pouch. Don't forget to take the plastic off when you put the chum in the, in, the, in the bucket. Otherwise, it doesn't flow too well when you have the plastic around it. So you got to cut it away with a knife, drop it into the chum pot. And I also had a buddy who one time filled up his pot, put the chum in it, took it, threw it overboard, but forget to attach the line. So you have to have a hanker line to attach to your chum pot. So chum is in the pot, tied the line on, let it down to the bottom. Also, you can shake it around a little bit that the weight of the chum pot will actually stir the bottom up and some small little copepods, crustaceans might end up coming out of, the, out of the muddy bottom in addition to the chum starting to flow. So you set up, you got your chum pots down. Uh, I do like to fish two chum pots. If I have three or four people on the boat, a lot of times these fish will come right to the pot. So the lucky person standing right by the chum pot is going to catch all the fish and nobody else catches anything. So I usually hang a pot on the stern of the boat and I put another, another one up midship maybe or off the bow. So the whole area under the boat is chummed and the fish will move around and everybody can catch. Okay, so you're all set up. Now we want to talk about a little terminal tackle. For flounder you'd like a nice uh, fairly light rod, uh, something like this. This is a custom made rod from here at Augie's Bait and Tackle. But uh, you want something light. You don't want to overpower these fish you know, 10 pound test mono or something like that would be sufficient. Small reel, make it appropriate, make it sporting. You know, it's a lot of fun. So, and that's half the fun, getting your tackle together, you know, getting a rod, purchasing a rod, building a rod, all of those things. It's very exciting. You get your rod, now you're going to attach your sinkers and hooks. You have a couple of options here. A lot of tackle shops will have pre-made rigs, you know, all packaged, and they're good. They usually involve a uh, three-way swivel with a, a sinker snap attached to it and then a couple of hooks, a couple of flounder hooks tied in tandem. 
And these rigs are pre-made. All you have to do is get a sinker, attach it to the clip. Notice the sinker is painted yellow. I think that's an extra attractant, and I think that's worthwhile. And then there's a spot to tie your line from your fishing rod to, and there you have it. There's your basic terminal tackle for flounder. Sinker brings it to the bottom. Of course, on the hooks, you're going to put a nice piece of bait. But notice the attractant here. There's a little a yellow grub on this one. There are other varieties that you can get, such as these hooks that have a uh, plastic yellow bead. Looks like a little piece of corn attached to it. Uh, in this case, I've taken plain uh, pre-snelled hooks that I bought in a package, you know, half a dozen in a package, and I simply tied them together in tandem myself, which is pretty easy to do. I'll just give you a quick little demonstration of that, how you can do it. You take two hooks, right? You take one and fold it in half, producing a loop. Right? And then you take the loop at the end of the uh, leader for the second hook and pass the loop you made by folding it in half through that loop and then bring the hook and little attractant all the way through and pull that tight so you basically have almost loop to loop but this could slide so I like to take and make, take this leader and make a half hitch around that and pull that half hitch tight and that will keep it from sliding. And also notice the way it comes out. It keeps the two hooks kind of separated from each other. Okay, so you have your rod, your hooks, your sinker, and the attachment for it. That's sitting on the bottom. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to have to bait it up before you drop it down. You have a few choices here as far as baits go. So worms are probably best, but a lot of people like to use clam. <clears throat> they, uh, you can take clams in a frozen package, thaw it out, cut them up into small pieces, a little piece on a hook. That works well. <clears throat> probably one of the best hook baits you can use is a bank mussel. A lot of people will take bank mussels and they can use them as chum. They'll break them up and put them in a chum pot, but I like to actually take a bank mussel and you got to be a little bit careful get a fine knife, a little small knife get into that bank mussel and shuck it open and you can see the color nice and yellow typical of a bank mussel and then just kind of scoop that out of the shell and right there you have one of the finest baits that you can actually have for flounder fishing. All right, beautiful bank mussel, just put that on the hook. A two pound flounder, believe me, will have no problem sucking that whole thing right in. All right, probably the best bait around for a hook bait, but it's a little work and time consuming. All right, the other thing, a little, couple of words about worms. Worms have gotten very expensive lately. And there are basically two types of saltwater worms. Well, the blood worms cost a lot more than the sandworms do, but they both catch about the same. The advantage, I think, in the blood worm, and it may be worth a couple extra dollars you're going to pay for a dozen, is that the body, the consistency is tougher. It holds together better. So when you put it on a hook, uh, they're going to last longer, especially if there are crabs around and so forth. A blood worm will usually last longer than a sandworm would because a sandworm is a lot more delicate the body and tends to be torn off quite easily. But considering price and so forth, they both catch beautifully. The flounder around, you're going to catch them real well. Uh, if you have a very large worm like this, you might cut this in half and make two pieces out of it. Uh, anything on a smaller size, uh, let's see. You know, sometimes they break apart into pieces. Uh, that's about as small as I would use on a hook. You know, two or three inch piece. Uh, don't cut it up into these little tiny pieces. You really need something that's attractive, that is still wiggling and looks natural uh, to attract the fish and to get them to really jump on it, especially the big fish. So that's your other option that we have. The worms, sandworms and bloodworms, they both work beautifully. And then, 
So you're going to hook up your baits. You're going to bait your hooks, attach it to your line, drop it to the bottom. Chum is working. Then it's a matter of patience. You have to work a spot. I give every spot at least one half hour. You invest a lot of chum and you invest some time. You don't want to get everything on the bottom, give it two minutes and then leave. Sometimes it'll take 10 or 15 minutes or more for that chum to be carried down tithe and to start pulling fish and that takes a while for that to happen. If you don't catch a fish in a half an hour, then I would say there's a good possibility you might have to move to another spot. But give it a good half hour. And then if you do catch a fish, you're going to have to stick it out longer. It might be just the beginning of a bunch of fish coming, so you have to stay with it. And patience is the word. But most importantly, get out there, get your things together, get a good group on the boat, and have a great time flounder fishing.